Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I just hope that you're doing fine with where today. This is your presenter, Jane Duke Stories. And yet with um, another thought-provoking video that I want us to share opinions, I want us to discuss about this. Now, there is this white woman comes out and boldly says that, um, you know, white women never participated in slavery. They didn't did anything. Like, we don't know that um, there was inheritance of slaves. And women were beneficiary of this inheritance. Like naturally, they were the, bene uh, the beneficiary of, 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 of this, right? Now, white women, especially widows and daughters, inherited enslaved people as part of family wealth. Southern laws allowed women to inherit and control property, which included enslaved persons. Like we have historians like um, Stephanie E. Johnson uh, Rogers, who highlighted in his book, that they were a property white women are slave owners in america south which was written in 2019 that women were often involved in economic transaction of buying and selling managing enslaved people yet this white woman comes out and says that they want unity with black people like they never participated in slavery and says that men are the one who are evil but not white women hey I don't want to say much. Let's buckle up for this video. Then I'll be back with my commentary, as you surely know. And hey, just a simple request. I just want you to like the video, subscribe the channel, and maybe later on after watching the video, if you um, like it, you can come back and join my membership, subscribe, and see what I can really offer you. Until then, let's dive right. Dear Black women, so I did a video yesterday addressing specifically black women i just wanted to see how long my video would last before being taken down for violating community standards didn't take long so as a woman we have blazed these trails together we did this together we need to stand together women to include black women got the right to vote after men they're still leading the race it's still not equal equality equal pay we still get less on the dollar so why are you alienating a high percentage of allies like why are you doing this? Separation will lead nowhere and in the real world, aside from TikTok, we have to bargain together. We have to do this together. Why are you alienating and what constitutes white? This is 2024 and most of us are blended. My family is blended. You know, I have um, cousins that are married to beautiful black women or uh, even black men. Um, so there's a lot of mixed in my family. And in, so if it's just a black pack, like what, where do you draw the line? Only certain black people, because I have 2% Nigerian. Am I allowed in? I think we all should be allowed in because we're women and this is our battle together. I don't know if you noticed, but the world is still being run by men. Men that love war and that love keeping us divided. So why would you want to divide yourselves? Women had nothing to do with slavery, literally, like nothing. I'm sure we were saying, hey, babe, this is pretty effed up because we're nurturing, we're loving, it's wrong. That was men. So why this hate on white women? What has a white woman, because we're somewhat married to white men? My husband's not a racist or uh, we're Gen X. Like, we grew up together. I went to school. I learned so much from the black culture because of 
desegregation and I loved it. Rockin' a robin all day long, puffin' up, puffin' in, and we're and we're doing the double dutch. Like I I loved it. And we were friends, so I don't know what happened and why there's this divide and especially when we all need each other. Can can someone let me know what's what's going on and what changed to all the hate on white women? Because I would certainly like to know what happened. Because I don't feel like I, I, we all have friends that are diverse. So do you think there's some little pocket of, you know, a place where we're not all interacting, engaging, um, in the neighborhood, it's, it's diverse. So what happened? to where there's black pack, hate against white women. Um, I, I don't know what what happened. Why, why are you guys mad at white women? Could, I mean, seriously, I, I just wanna know. I mean, I, my friends didn't get the memo, you know. I have a beautiful um, friend that has a doctorate, it's tons. I have every ethnicity of friends. I don't know if they get the memo because we still love each other. So I don't, I don't know. Are these educated black pack? Like what? I don't know. Someone let me know. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Women had nothing to do with slavery. Literally. So if women had nothing to do with slavery, who were the men that owned the big houses in the middle of the plantation married to? Oh, it was the good, kind, and caring white women that were just like, I know there's slaves out back, but he's a nice guy. He provides for me. I know that they have their slave catchers and their police forces just out unaliving black people and chasing them with the dogs, and I don't like it, but he's a good man. It's just business. Honey, you haven't been in this with black women from the beginning, okay? And it's not black women and... <laughs> black women aren't the problem here, honey. They aren't the ones who invented the racism that you and I benefit from. Okay? That was white men trying to gain wealth and power so that they could get the trophy wives. You know, all those brutalized women who wanted proximity to power and were like, he seems like a nice guy. Uncle Sam will keep me safe. But it turns out Uncle Sam is just a dirty sex trafficking pervert. Because cause you do know that's what a lot of slavery was about. It wasn't just about the indentured servitude, the, just the, the stolen labor, you know, produced by the bodies that were chained. No, 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 it, was, it wasn't just that. It was the sex trade. White women have been fantasizing over black men for a long time. Same way white men have been lusting after black flesh for a long time. See, you and I were born inside the empire. They tried taking us as children and putting their ideas in our heads so that we would willingly pull the white hood over our minds. We ain't innocent. And until you reconcile with that, you're going to wrestle with all that shame and guilt inside that has you cognitively dissonant and whitewashing history. There's no shame and guilt in saying you were a child lied to. There's shame and guilt in doubling down on white supremacy and reinforcing it in your own mind. Because all that does is serve the patriarchs that you're all upset about. Imperialist, 
patriarchal, white supremacist, colonial, resource extracting, industrial capitalism. It came out of the minds, out of the ego of violent white European men who wanted to subjugate all femme labor and make sure the trophy wives were directly under the thumb. Can't go anywhere. Because that's how abusers are. And they taught a whole bunch of women to be that girl boss. You can own your own plantation too one day, honey. Just incorporate it. And now you got a bunch of wealthy white women that have their little financial empires on this planet right now who are making billions off the death of black women in Congo and in Sudan and in Kenya and in Haiti and off the death of brown women and their children and their families in Gaza, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Kurdistan. And the list goes on and 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 on because of the white empires that went around the world with the doctrine of discovery and all the nice nuns that were teaching the indigenous children in residential schools. White women ain't fucking innocent. Stop pretending. Because as long as you pretend that you're not culpable, as long as you pretend there's not blood on your hands, as long as you pretend that you were innocent with what they put in your head and you never once harmed anybody, you're spiritually bypassing reality and you're going to remain cognitively dissonant and hurting people. I know you don't want to hurt people. I can hear it in your tone. I can tell it in your words but you weren't given the education to fully understand your working class oppression. That's not on you. That's on the abusers. So as you see indigenous people and black people and other marginalized people trying to correct you in your whiteness, since you don't seem to understand what it is, it's a culture of violence. Genocidal, land-stealing violence that only cares about money, not people. Because it's delusional and spiritually bypassing the reality that we're all living, breathing beings on a planet in space and we need each other. It's not equitable because a whole bunch of us are still bypassing that reality spiritually, emotionally. We're not emotionally evolving through the grief that says, holy fuck, look at all this blood on my hands and then doing something about it with the rest of your life to make sure that liberation is a reality instead of something we just play about on TikTok for fucking likes. Pardon my tone, I'm pretty passionate about this because whiteness is killing the world and creating an extinction event. We're not only more black people, more indigenous people, more, more brown people and more Arab people and more people living with disabilities. More marginalized people are going to suffer and perish as we follow the white male ego implanted in all of our minds off the fucking cliff. Because they made some of us believe that we're innocent just because we're not the overt monsters in the world. Honey, I was born a transgender woman. I was born queer with autism and ADHD, as femme as, as they come. I had that beaten out of me. I was assimilated in violent white institutions where our history was whitewashed and where the truth of the books that were burned in May 6, 1933 never made it to my classroom. I understand the violent training ground that we endured as children. I understand how they tried erasing every one of our identities, every one of our European, you know, generational historical family cultures and giving us nationalist ones full of whiteness. Canadian, here you go. Do you speak Gaelic like your, your, your Scottish and your Irish ancestors? No. Do you, do you speak with those accents that your ancestors a couple of generations ago over on the other side of the pond had no, it's all been whitewashed out. It's all been Canadianized, eaten up by the machine. 
And a whole bunch of white people don't realize we were born assimilated to these empires because we had white mothers who taught us all the traditions of it as our fathers were teaching us the violence of it. We were kept assimilated for 13 years in schools that don't have graves out, graves out back like residential schools do because we didn't know any better. Indigenous kids did. They were like, this is all fucking madness. What are you doing believing in this? Because their parents connected to their Holy Spirits, the land that our bodies are made out of, and this universe of power and spiritual wonder help lead their children towards the truth so that they could embody the love and the life that they are not like white kids who are born with all of that disconnected from us and we're the whole time trying to figure out who we are appropriating identities whitewashing history in order to confirm our internalized biases instead of facing those cognitive dissonances the fear within them and accepting the truth that liberates our minds from the cages that white men and their violent egos that have been projected as terrorism placed us in. Under their thumb, right where they want us. Allies and accomplices to creating this plantation in space that commodifies and exploits every life on this planet that breathes with it. We ain't fucking innocent, honey. Dear black woman, black women don't want to work with us because you and other white women like you are lumping the struggles of a white woman and the struggles of a black woman together and saying, look, they're the same. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to stop right there. You got flack for the, your last video and, and rightfully so um, and you're going to get flack for this one and, and rightfully so you did nothing together they succeeded in spite of you I mean hell you, you, you couldn't even share a bathroom until 1964 while it is true that some African American suffragists in the north were able to vote with the 19th amendment the reality is, is that the majority of black women could not. Oftentimes the tactics of literary tests, poll taxes, voter ID requirements, intimidation, and threats were used against the entirety of the black community as well as the Latin community, the Asian community, and basically anybody who wasn't um, a Mayo sapien. It wasn't until 1965, thanks to the work of women like Fannie Lou Hammer and Diane Nash, that the Voting Rights Act was passed. That applied to everyone. See, had you been in it together, y'all wouldn't have stopped when you got yours. But that's exactly what you did. You stopped when you got yours. No, what people need to do, right? Seriously, stop talking, right? And listen to other people's experiences. Listen to all of them. I promise you. They are not the same as yours. You don't have the right to speak for them. I'm just gonna have to look at y'all for a minute because she, she, that whole thing, she acted so motherfucking oblivious as to why things are the way they are. She's literally having the same conversation with us that those women had with us in the 50s, 60s, and 70s when they were trying to get their own rights. The moment that they got their own rights, what happened? They left us. Remember that? Remember that? Remember how they were able to vote and we couldn't? Remember that? And remember they didn't give a fuck about us? They didn't hear nothing else? They didn't say nothing else about us? You didn't hear nothing else about us? They didn't try to lift us up to where they were? No, no. And she wants to know what now? What is she trying to know? Is she oblivious? 
Is she is she is she serious right now? Is she is she playing in my face? I feel like she playing in my face. I feel like she playing in my face. And the fact that she's even asking this question lets me know that these motherfuckers feel like they did absolutely nothing fucking wrong. They acting like they did nothing fucking wrong. Ain't nobody want to make the same mistakes over and over again, steadily lifting a motherfucker up that keeps stomping them into the mud the moment they make their motherfucking goal? Absolutely fucking not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. What the fuck do we look like raising you up and raising you up and raising you up? And then the moment that you get to where the fuck you need to be, you don't feel like, hey, we're at your motherfucking standard. So you want to sit there and, and, and stomp us down. And not fucking help us. How come you haven't opened your mouth to help us? I ain't heard shit from you. Why the fuck are we always having to help you? How, get somebody else to do it. Do it your motherfucking self. How about that? How about that? But stop fucking asking us. We got our own shit that we dealing with. We got to deal with no fucking autonomy because of your ass now. We, we have no control over our own fucking bodies. We still got to get permission from our non-existent fucking husbands because of your ass. So yeah, what the fuck we look like helping you? The fuck? No. Um, please go back and uh, watch that whole video and then come back here. Okay. Um... This lady. We about the same age. I, I... Oh, Jesus, take the wheel because I was raised better than that. Oh. I'm going to need you. This, this is it's not insulting. It's not going to be insulting. But this is what I need you to do. I need you to get one of these. One of these. Look, mine has either side. I need you to get one of these. And when you say that, take out black women. And say it to oneself. Yeah. Because you cannot tell me you're that, you're that lost in the sauce that you don't know. Uh, division. What country are you living in? Because wasn't it when we told y'all before? See, we learned helping y'all get the right to vote was not for us, okay? <laughs> that was to help y'all. We still had to, you know, fight for our right to vote. And, um, 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 excuse me, allergies is up today. They're on hard. But, uh, my, yeah. Dear white women, why are you so irritating and want to use black women to help you, but when it, they need help, you're never there? Dear white women, it's time to vote concerning your issues. You cannot leave that on us. I know we seem like the superheroes of the universe, but we're tired. We're tired. Because come election year, you become our best friends. Y'all want to, ooh, this eye's itching and I don't want to scratch it. Y'all want to become our best friends. Y'all want to be our best friends. Y'all want to unite and do stuff together. But when they doing stuff to us, Y'all sit back. And as soon as we tell you you're wrong, you want to cry. 
We're past the crying tears. So, once again, go to you and your friends and ask them that question. Look in the mirror, like Michael Jackson said. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Because I'm sorry, sweetheart. The Tootsie tiptoeing and, hey, I need your help today. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And before we can be as one, I think you need to start telling some of your counterparts. They need us. You need us. Every time you want something from us, we give it to you. Every time. Every time. But there shall be no more. At least from this one. There shall be no more. And uh, 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 I'm not going to say I'm pretty sure. But I think there's a lot of other black women that think just like me. Because in the infamous... Because this is how I seen it. My queen, Miss Queen. Oh, don't let me fuck her name up. Fuck her, Lee. Because, bitch, I know you lying. I know, I know, I know, I know you fucking lying. Dear black women, so I did a video yesterday. How about you leave us alone? How about you quit trying to use us to boost yourself? How about you understand that you are white? You're not 2% Nigerian. I don't give a shit what some male in DNA test says. You will never understand what black women have dealt with in this country and continue to deal with on a regular basis. So please, 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 please stop trying to jump onto our backs because our backs are tired. Okay? We're tired. We're over it. We're so fucking tired of it. Okay? We're tired of being the heroes for people. We're tired of being the solidarity for everybody. We're tired of rallying the troops for everybody. We are fucking tired. You know what else we're tired of? White women. You. You. White women jumping on apps, claiming 2% of something, and then expecting us to jump in and open arm, give you some love, and, 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 and tout you around like, oh my god, she hey sis, girl, fuck you. Because in a moment's notice, you would turn on us. And, and use your white your white woman tears to condemn us all to hell. Girl, bye. To do this together, why are you alienating? And what? Oh, excuse me. Um. So, um, her video, the one that that I uh, stitched this with, I don't even know where to start with her. Who's gonna tell her? Who's gonna tell her? Um, her white counterparts won't tell her. There's so much to that video that just screams racism. Um, from her saying that white women had no role in slavery to her saying we all need to work together. Um, she's a pick me, a pick me. You can't be one of us. You're not black. You don't aspire to be black. You don't even want to be black. You just want to be a part of something that does not include you. And that's the black and the black culture. Anything that black women have done white women have benefited from she is so far off base i just wonder like you know i would never put labels on anyone but the things that she's saying makes absolutely no sense why can't we work together work together to do what i don't think she understands that black women will work anyway it's what we do it's what we do why don't you go and do you why don't you rally your troops together and why don't you guys make an impact why do you need black women to help you, help you do what? I, you're, uh, I'm just flabbergasted. I mean, truly and truly, I'm having my lunch here, grapes. Mm. 
It is so good. The Jewish women. That one was about as big as a plum. Sorry about that. Um, but she, she, I, I don't even know what to say to her. Um, she's had a lot of stitches on that video. The only thing I can say is that she's trying to be a pick me. She reminds me of a director of nurses, nursing I know. Um, this director loves to say black names. Like say if they hire somebody black, they just want to say their name like, um, Shaheen. Like, so what? I mean, so you want kudos because you hire somebody black. It just, and this person just reminds me so much of that director. You know, um, this woman trying to um, act like we don't know that part of history. And it is in the, I mean, it is on the internet. Everyone can see, you can, you could, you can find like, um, we know that they participated in this. And now after successfully not trying to bring black men into this, they sort of, like, okay, let's, let's try this thing with black women, right? If you can work for them. White women were frequently left to manage plantations and slaves when their husbands were absent or deceased. They engaged in direct control over the labor and the discipline of the enslaved. For instance, they would oversee tasks such as harvesting crops or house labor where enslaved people were responsible for maintaining the households of white family. Now, I'm going to be talking about something, but it's really equally important. White women in the domestic sphere. White women participated in slavery, not only as owners, but also within the domestic sphere, where they, widely, uh, where they wielded significant influence over the lives of the enslaved people particularly enslaved women and children, they perpetuated the racial hierarchy through the following. One, domestic control and punishment. White women often directly managed enslaved domestic workers who were primarily black women and children. They used the authority to enforce harsh discipline and even physical punishment. This was not a passive or reluctant role. Many white women actively asserted their authority and maintained the structure of racial exploitation in their homes. Second thing that, uh, second thing that I'm going to be saying also on white women in the domestic fear, reproductive exploitation, really, really important. Enslaved black women often subjected to productive exploitation, including forced childbirth to increase the enslaved population. White women as the mistress of the household benefited from this practice and often facilitated, directly facilitated, or overlooked the abuses enslaved women endured. Third, white women as the beneficiary of the system, even when not directly involved in the management of enslaved labor. White women were clearly beneficiaries of the institution of slavery. Now listen, social and economic benefits. Slavery allowed white women to enjoy privileges that came from wealth and status. They were economically dependent on the labor of enslaved people and often engaged in leisure or activities that were in uh, enabled by the unpaid labor of black people. Two, cultural reinforcement of white supremacy. White women played a key role in reinforcing the culture of white supremacy. They were part of the broader societal structure that defined social roles, racial roles, and justified the subjugation of black people as a moral and social necessity. White women participated in perpetuation of pro-slavery ideology teaching their children racist ideas and encouraging the continuation of slavery. I'm going to be talking about um, post-emancipation, white women's continued racial violence, and I'm not holding back. After the abolition of slave, white women continue to uphold white supremacy, especially through their involvement organization, such as the United Daughters of the Confederacy, of the Confederacy, that's the UDC and the KU, 
Clark's Klan, the KKK. These groups were instrumental in creating and promoting the lost cause narrative which romanticized the confederacy and minimized the brutality of slavery. The United Daughters of Confederacy, founded in 1894, the UDC worked to uh, memorialize confederate soldiers and promote the ideology that slavery was a banning institution. White women in this organization sought to protect and restore social order that slavery had maintained. Lynching and racial violence. White women were also involved in acts of racial violence. Yep, trust me. Often by falsely accusing black men on sexual assault or other crimes, which led to lynching, of course, as a punishment. The myth of white womanhood as being under threat from black men was frequently used to justify racial violence and terror. Now, I'm also going to be talking about um, myth of the white female innocence. The myth of that white women were not involved in slavery is part of large narrative that positions white women in an innocent bystander in racial oppression. The myth is contradicted by substantial history evidence. Okay. Active participation in slave markets. White women were present at slave markets, buying enslaved people for domestic use and plantation labor. Resistance to abolition. While some white women did become abolitionists, many white women opposed the abolition of slavery because it threatened their economic security and social standing. They were invested in maintaining the social, uh, the social hierarchy that slavery reinforced. So um, you might want to try and look at these um, scholars and how they talked about this. First is Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. There is this uh, book, They Were a Property. That's the year 2019. This groundbreaking book explores the role of white women in the slave economy and challenges the notion that they were, part, uh, they were passive participants. The second one, is the, uh, which was written by uh, Tavola Glimpf, Out of House of Bondage, which was written in 2008. Um, Glimps investigates the complex dynamics between white women and enslaved black women in the plantation household, emphasizing the role of women as oppressors. 3. Catherine Clinton, The Plantation Mistress, that's written in 1982. Clinton examines the lives of white women in Southern and South and how they were both complicit and it benefited the system of slavery. These are presented in Tech Stories, and I'll ask you again if you're watching this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, joining my membership. I will really, really appreciate that. Until then, peace, love, and reparations. Salute.